the fools ain't no. Oh, it carries on, no brothers and sisters. Spoon. It carries on. But you know what? Time has gone. And now we can really get back. Dr. Mark Walker, I have to just bust a little history for the brothers and sisters before you come on. Brother, talk to me, King. How's it going? Well, first of all, I want to give thanks for life, especially in this time. And I want to give, I want to make some acknowledgement um, first to the most high and, and to you, my brother, for the opportunity to be sharing with so many people. You've done the, put the effort out, seeing you yesterday, you're Superman. You're my Superman. You're my superhero. And it was only through you that I understood, or maybe it was Kemet, it was through you that Superman is also um, based on our nation of people. So I, I want to acknowledge, I want to acknowledge um, the Most High and the blessings from him. I want to acknowledge yourself. And the, the speakers who's gone on so far, especially our sister, um, you know, just spoke, Sister Adele. <laughs> I heard fantastic. That was, I, I'm speechless. That, that, that was actually the nucleus of everything. And maybe that's what, that's a good title for a book for her, the nucleus of everything, because she just said, <laughs> hey, you know, she just said everything. And she, she explained it systematically. It was scientific, historical, and more importantly, she made it in reference to our dilemmas and what's important about how we get out of our particular, you know, predicament. So I want to acknowledge that was really amazing, really, really amazing. Uh, I want to suggest that, you know, if she hasn't already, that she um, set up some sort of a, a school um, that spe specializes in, in, in individuals from our community who get some sort of a qualification, certification of understanding the nucleus of everything. Mm. Um, and it, it may not have gone into the spiritual sciences, but it's a nucleus of everything we need you know, as weapons, as she call it, to antidote the weapons against us. It was very, very powerful. And there need to be books for children. There need to be, you know, all that cooperation stuff. She, she, she said it all, and, and a thesis. And to... By the way, okay, so let me open like this. So okay. I want to thank all You're the, uh, all the uh, listeners on the platform now. Thank you for the work you've put in to do this, make it possible. Thank you for the listeners that's joined. Um, I'm in Portugal. I'm looking across a really beautiful landscape, if I can call it that. So I give France um, everything safe with me here. Um, okay, so she mentioned something called thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, and that's really a, a science, a scientific, um, uh, a scientific formula that's been used for millions of years, not thousands. And in my studies of Sanskrit, I had to go through understanding the philosophy of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. Um, before I do that, before I go into anything like that, because people want to hear about health, so I'm going to talk about health, and you can guide me and take me wherever you want to go. You, and, and by the way, at any time, my brother Andrew, my beloved brother, and you've been sending around videos saying you love me, brother. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> and people may not, I love you more. Just for those who may not know where that's all coming from, it's over 30 years now that we've been on the battlefield. And what I, what I want to praise you for is that you are still there on the field, on the battlefield. And um, we've been marching the progress has come, even if we did baby steps, we would have still had to make progress. I want to commend you for the progress you've made, my brother. Sincerely, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's epic. So, um, so the next thing I want to do is clear some of the um, unexplained things, the, 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 the unspoken word, people listening. You've promoted me as the first homeopath. When I saw the stuff, I said, I'm going to have to spend maybe two minutes and explain the stuff, right? Because I have not really spent time promoting the things I've done in my life. And it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. And you asked me to write you kind of a CV. I made it really short. That was a synopsis. That was a synopsis. Talk um, that was really... So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to verify the things 
that you've already said. There's more. My son's planning to do a documentary at some point, and it will be lofty with all the things I've done. But for the time being, I am the first homeopath in the UK. Say that okay. again. Say that I again. Am, I am the first registered and practicing homeopath from the Afro-Caribbean uh, community in the UK. Thank you. And I say that with humility because I would love to have more of us, obviously. And we all love elders. We all love when there's someone older than you there and you can turn to them and say, well, it's him. He's, he's a big man. Um, and it took me some so, years. So Dr. Walcott, Dr. Walcott, just that statement alone. I don't know if you can see the chat room. Everyone is just going mad in the chat room. They're going at well, when you see the ones, when you see the ones in the chat room, brother, they just say that you're God, you're God. I'm the first Afro Caribbean homeopathic doctor registered and practicing in the UK history. In UK history. Come on, brother. I met, I, I, I got a phone call. I made that statement, and I think on King Lion's radio show 30 odd, maybe 40 years ago, uh, Genesis. And, and I got a phone call from a, a, a gentleman called Joe Sinclair, right? Right, let's just, let's just clear this up. Joe Sinclair, he wrote for, for the police, Walking on the Moon, that song. Oh. He's a songwriter. He's from St. Kitts. So he called me. He said, hey, I heard about you, and I heard you're saying you're the first homeopath in the UK from the, you know, uh, the Afro-Caribbean uh, community. Did you know I studied homeopathy before you? I said, really? He says, I know Dr. Bakshi, Dr. Randawa. He went to all the doctors. I'm like, whoa. I said, OK. He said, the difference is, though, I didn't practice. I didn't do anything with it. I just studied it, and I didn't do anything with it. That's the point. And last year, condolences, last year, he passed away. So I got a phone call from another brother saying he passed. And so I would have loved him to be on this platform right now today. He would be really proud of what I've done and where he was 40 years ago to see that no one, black people didn't even know what the word homeopathy meant. And so rolling forward, I did go to India around the age of 18 and studied um, the, you know, the Vedic science and became possibly, in my, I didn't say anyone, the first Jamaican Vedic priest ever in Indian history. And that's even more than the homeopathy, homeopathy thing. Because, thank you, it, it, where, where I got my initiation in India, my teacher told me that no one from the Western world, no, regardless of color, no one from the Western world has ever had initiation in that ancient mystical order. So I belonged to that and I got all the initiations. He favored me because he couldn't understand how a black man had come from that world and, and, and managed to come in the, the bushes of India. And so rolling forward, I, I became again a priest in that regard. And so when people say, yo, he says he speaks Sanskrit. Jan Maad Yasyai Tarcha Shachi Shua Bigya Shura Tenebrama Rid Abikabiye Buhyanti Yakshurayaha. That is pure Sanskrit. And it will take anyone over 30 years to learn that. That's my evidence. If there's any Hindus or Indians out there listening anywhere, they will know it takes at least 30 years to speak Sanskrit fluently and with the proper pronunciation. For the soul, there's never birth, nor death. No having once been, does it ever cease to be. It is undying, it is primeval, it is ever existing, and it is not slain when the body is slain. That's a description of your soul. The portion of you that would say, the Most High has given you that portion and we're made in the same image as the Most High. That hymn from the Vedas describes that. So that's my opening to, to clear some of those things that people say, is it true, is it true, is it true? It's true. So uh, to get the other stuff out of the way, I wrote Mysterious Girl for Peter Andre that went number one and about five 
other songs with Peter Andre. I wrote them with him. What? Peter Andre, you didn't even know that. I, I didn't Mis know that. Wrote Mysterious Girl. You want a bit of history, listeners? Mysterious Girl went number two after Fuji's. Right, that we had to take it out of uh, top of the pops at the time. We had to take it down. It was just on. It went platinum. We had to pull it from the charts so that we could put the next song on. Right. So Fuji's Lauren Hill was number one. We were number two. Right. With Chris, uh, with uh, Chris, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, um, uh, with uh, Killing Me Softly, number one. And um, in fact, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that song to prove something nobody would know except. Even Peter didn't know this. That song, I had just left med school. And that same guy who called me and told me that Mr. Joe Sinclair died, he called me and said, I want to give you the name of a Jewish friend of mine. He's a multimillionaire and he needs somebody to do some projects, but you, you're the man. I call him, his name's Philip Jacobs. We're very close, very close for over 25 years now or more. And this is what happened. Wow. I went to the studio, he played me a song, it was called Mysterious Man. It was sung by a woman, and he said, we need to give this to a kid in Australia who's gonna blow up, his name's Peter Andre. We changed the lyrics around and wrote it to suit a male, and it was called Mysterious Girl. Um, wow. We took, some, we took some elements from Jama a Jamaican song I won't mention for legal purposes, and I put the thing together, and Peter Andre flew over from uh, Australia, and it went number seven in Australia. Two years later, it went number one, uh, two in the UK. Then the Full Monty, that film, the Full Monty came out. It was in there, then it went number one. So that, that's my musical acclaim. Finally, I own a school. I run a music can, school. Can I, can I pause you one second, Doctor? Yeah. Away, Corder Marshall is the head of that, and he just sent us artists. So we were just writing songs, and I was just doing all that stuff, pop pop music, so. And I know you went to Def Jam and all, I remember. I worked with Carmack in Def Jam with my son, Nimai, who was nine at the time. He became a producer, an awesome producer. He was signed to Neo. You know Neo? Yes. From Neo signed my son. So he was, I met Neo, Neo, we met Neo at Metropolis. He met my son, we played him some stuff. He was blown away. He says, this guy is crazy. He turned to his, one of his um, managers called DL, he says from, from LA, he said, DL, sign this guy. And that was it. And the rest was history. We, we wrote stuff, produced stuff for him as well. So, um, and his, his manager was Abraham. He was actually from the UK. So Abraham to my brother, Ev, linked that up. But that's my musical acclaim. And then my son, Nimai, now runs my school called Marder. I need to say this and give him his credit. MADA, M-A-D-A, if you want to look it up, Google it, it's called London M-A-D-A. M-A-D-A stands for Music and Dance Academy. And we've been running MADA for over 30, 35 years now and registered with the Royal School of Music. I just saw an amazing, if you like, delivery by Lady Adele and some other individuals involved in teaching. And so I spent decades teaching, actually. And so I gave that school to my son, and he's still running it. We have a 100% success rate with all our students for over 35 years with the Royal School of Music. We have never, ever had a student fail, ever, with the Royal School of Music, ever. And if you go on the website, we have four-year-olds, five-year-olds. When I approached the, the um, when I approached, um, uh, 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 the um, uh, what's it called now? The Academy of um, the, the Royal School of Music. Okay. When I approached them, they said, Your students are too young. We can only take them to do exams at seven. You got them at four. Right. So I, I spent a lot of time developing young children's skills. You can go on the website and see some of the four year olds, four year olds that I taught and so forth. Nimai has taken on Victor Romero's Evan's son called Sion, and he's now one of our teachers. We employ our own students to become teachers, so we keep the teaching method in the school. And so that's running now. London, if you want to see this, London Marder. London, M-A-D-A, -A, put that into Google and you can see stuff. You can see what's Brothers going on. Sisters, you see what I'm saying about this man? This man's a living God. I call him a G-O-D. This is Dr. Walker, the conscious doctor. Doctor, 
There's so much we're going to do. We're going to have to do a part one and part two. But doctor, how, please, I know it's very soon we're going to let people come in, but brother, how important is the knowledge of self and who you are and your identity? How important is that to your physical, mental and spiritual health, brother? Because you're, you're one of the top doctors in the world, brother. Teach us today. Okay, so let me find the best place to start with referencing that because we all now have been, you know, brainwashed and, and as Sister Del outlined through the corporations and Christianity and the way that we've been shaped and modeled and indoctrinated, um, we all have a different ideology of what self is. So we have to, first of all, get on the same hymn page and then we can talk. So let me get everyone in the same hymn page. Um, regardless what color you are, regardless where you come from in uh, demographically in the world, what race you belong to, nation, creed, um, as long as you're breathing air in and out in a human form, in a human body, um, then there is a thing called identity. Identity. And even if you have it wrong, there is still a right one, identity, um, your ID. And I suppose we can start with the ID that the Most High has blessed every single creature with is an ID. To start with, fingerprint. We all have a unique ID on our fingerprint. The truth is we have a unique idea about every single cell of us. Well, that's another scientific debate, but as for some, as for the things we can't debate, we have an, a, a fingerprint and you can also, someone can tell if someone's, uh, uh, who the person is, John Doe, by their teeth as well. That's just, an example, we can go on, but we're not going to, we don't need to, the, the platform of intelligent people know we have particular things about us, any individual that tells us that actually that's this person and so forth, ID, ID, identification. So if we're now on the same hymn page that we all accept that we have an ID, even if we've, even if we've lost it, there is such a thing as an ID. Now, you said spiritually, mentally, physically. So I'm going to go to the most, I'm going to, we're going to, they call it ontology. Ontology means you start with like Maslow's laws of needs. Maslow's laws of needs, you start with the most important one, which is to survive, to live, maintenance, to have water, a fridge, somewhere to sleep, a shelter, a home. These things are like the basics. I'm going to start with your question of uh, centralizing your question so we can all get on the same hymn page about being. That's the next word they use, being, right? Is this. Um, so the, the, the apex of Maslow's laws of needs is self-actualization. That's a spiritual thing. Self-actualization is not ID, it's the highest claim you could have with reference to the Almighty, that you're claiming your ID with the Almighty, regardless if they don't see your ID here, Come you're on. claiming my ID at the apex of it all is I have self-actualization by being made in the image of the Most High. That's my ID as a human being. Even if you don't like me, my creed, my color, whatever, that's the truth. All right. So that's the fact, the pinnacle of it, the highest thing. Some of us die and we never come to understand our relationship with the most high, our self-actualization. That's, that's as high as we can realize what we are. When we realize what the most high is, we're made in his image. So therefore, that particle of the most high's image is none different from the most high. When you just call me a god, I'm humbled and honored, but we all gods, right, in that regard. And we, we, we worship a supreme God, and we're his children as little, you know, dots, insignificant dots, 
of him, but an insignificant dot of the most high is not so insignificant anymore because it's a most high. Whether it's small or it's the magnitude of it matters not. It could be infinitesimal, but it's just as powerful as the most high if he wants it to be so. So he uses us to do his bidding when he's ready because of our link with him when we reach our self-actualization. All right, that's the spiritual, put that aside. What's the importance of self? Okay, put that aside, that's like the ultimate. Some of us die and we'll never realize that one because we're still on the ground floor trying to make all the work and jobs and just making, you know, just status quo, meet and live. And we never get the time to look at what our self-actualization is. However, we're born somewhere. We're going to go with that, that one. We're born in a demographic place on this planet. And that gives us another ID, different to the one that the Most High has given you as a spirit. And so that ID is where it gets confusing because our sister Adele just said the planet and the, the, the countries within the planet has formed themselves as corporations. They decide what you eat, what's the main diet, what's the, what's the education. It's a meta system. So they, they design you with their meta system. You, 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 you listeners saying, but oh, me do what me want do. I me tell boy what me want tell boy and government can't tell me what to do and so forth and so forth. But actually, if you grew up in China, you would speak Chinese even as a black person, and you couldn't turn around and tell government, but you know what? Not not talk I know a language. I'm not talk Chinese. It doesn't work like that. Where you are, the environment does influence. We are carefully taught by the influences coming in, bits of information from where we are. So being born in St. Lucia, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Jamaica, Africa continent, and in Europe, some of us are born as black people. We now have a, a problem. Here's a problem. Germans speak German. The English speak English. Mexicans speak Mexican. Hmm. Spanish speak, the Spaniards speak Spanish. The Chinese speaks Chinese. But we found ourselves scattered all over the globe speaking someone else's language. And so there we lost a first part of our ID is Come lost. On, doctor. Through language. Come on, doctor. And those of you who heard me speak Sanskrit, that's how I'm able to still stay in touch with those divine references those hymns because the language is still intact unfortunately they raped our language so our id and our ancestors that collected all the great findings of the, the pyramids and all the things that our ancestors had gathered up we call it the gathering of the ancestors was raped you know it's raped and so um being scattered not to mention slavery scattering us even more because we were scattered by being a black nation that needed to be disseminated for the planet to have bits and pieces of us for it to roll properly. The, 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 you know, the Council of Nicaea, this was, this was Europe. We had to be there for their twisted, you know, philosophy to have some integrity. You know, Sister mentioned just then, you know, the, 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 the machinery, the, the, the engineering that's gone into these corporations and societies, Artemis, Hippocrates, Plato, you know, the, these were people who designed societies. And so they use our foundations and templates, but they still lack so much. They had to invite us into Rome to the a ground table of wise men and we became believe me when i first heard this i didn't believe it so if you don't believe this i'm not surprised i'm, I'm not i'm not disappointed come on um, chancellor williams in his book called the destruction of black civilization and the integrity of that man he wrote 16 volumes and narrowed it down to one book it's a heavy read but if you ever read that you will never be the same i came to accept that we are it took me time because in jamaica there's no way we want to believe that in Jamaica when it's a it's a it's an island run by Chinese and every other, right? Spanish and every other. We are the last people to believe that. We have more churches than anybody else in the world. So we've seen more of those European images, even though in the Caribbean, than than than, than anyone. We we we're getting that bombardment. So it's harder for us. 
you know, um, to accept that we taught them. Anyway, move on. The identity thing, uh, the importance of being and self-awareness of who you are, unless you gather back, back all the bits of your lost self, like they say, Sankofa, and remember where you came from, Come on. what people did, even where you are now won't make sense to where you are. And that's why, you know, the system made a really magical, you know, um, a presentation with where the children, the young people are today, with the difficulties with them cooperating with their elders, with their youngers, the manners has gone astray, right? Um, the cultural modalities have been lost. And what we see now is a hybrid of a mixture of confused us with hybrid them. And it's not looking good. And the outcome is going to be even more, you know, it's going to be more destructive than this pandemic unless we return to discovering who we really are. And I don't know anyone that's been doing a greater job than you have, um, to be honest, because even our great leaders, to mention a few, Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is my family, you know, he's Walcott as well. And, oh, yeah, uh, that's what Louis Walcott, uh, yes. Jamaica. And, and, our, our grandfather, brother Elijah Muhammad, father Elijah Muhammad, and many others in the, the ancestral lineage, they, they spoke somewhat what was needed to resurrect us from the dark night of the soul for us. But it, will, it, it, it takes someone to itemize the thing, like in a hospital you have the, you know, the cancer department or the medical department, or, you know, you can itemize and, and, and now I the thing so you can pay more attention to it and that's history and without history and, and the proper history like professor professor um professor smalls my hero he had to study other languages to get bits of our history because he said that they wrote it in spanish and kept it in the spanish you know libraries that we would never if you want to hide something from a black man, hide it in a book. But if you hide it in a Spanish book, it's impossible. He learned that he speaks Spanish. He went, he studied, he took the knowledge, and he, he then gave it to us. We have to return. And it's taken a little while, but you, you know when um, there's a thing about nature where it's a turning wheel is timed by the most high. And that's going on with us on it. We're moving. Just like we're on the planet moving, but the planet's moving too. So the time's moving and it's, it's more or less dictating, even though we think we are, it's dictating the seasons, winter, like it is now. I dare you to change it into summer or spring. So at the moment, there's nothing more powerful than a time that's come, than a people's time that's come. Woo! And I think, that's what's happening to us as a people. Listening to our brothers and sisters just now and uh, on the, uh, the sickle cell platform and in general, the, the social media things flying around, you can see the wake up call is going on whether we like it or not, whether our enemies like it or not, that wheel's turning with a wake up thing. And so it's time now that we open our eyes, but not just look, not, not, not look out, but look into who we are. Because if we don't gather up, gather up the lost parts of ourselves, it's like fitting a jigsaw puzzle, but it's from three different jigsaws. It's none of it is you. None of it, you're going to finish it, and it's not going to say anything with any reference that means anything significant really to you. Can, can I just, doctor, look, brothers and sisters, this is Dr. Walcott online. This is Dr. Walcott. Me whenever you need to. No, brother, but I don't. I, I know. I know when to please, be silent, King. You do. You gave a fantastic breakdown there of what Sankofa is really all about, brother. And I, I just wanted to say, brother, I love the analogy of the jigsaw because I know when I first came onto this path 35, 40 years ago, brother. Um, it's a you got to take a very brave step to appreciate. I know nothing. That's that for you. For you. For you to get that understanding. And to be honest, I know nothing. And that, because that, you see, yes. we are only secure True. based on the lies that we've been taught. So we'd rather stay secure, even though we know it's a lie. But to let go of the lies and say, you know what? I'm going to start my life all over again. And I remember 
this path and I was reading certain books, it was like my life was all over the place. It's just one massive jigsaw. Yeah. But once yes. that day became a reality whereby the jigsaw started to make a picture and that picture mm -hmm. made a scenery and that mm -hmm. scenery became, you know, a, a larger picture. And that time when you could stop and look at the whole picture and say to yourself, I understand. Exactly. That is the greatest moment that when I could look back at that picture and realize all those various jigsaws for 20 years or 30 years of study has now come together. But brother, I, 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 one, one thing I don't like about you, brother, I'm going to be honest, you know, because this is the platform, to be honest. Can, can I just say one, brother? Can I just say one thing I've got to say? One, one reason why I don't like you, brother, because when I'm speaking with you, a G-O-D, time collapses, brother. And, you know, mm. it's, it's crazy because I would have I would have stay with you, my king. But, brother, I'm going to jump ship one second. One second, brother, because I know a lot, I know a lot of, I know... I know a lot of people are here for this. Brother Doctor has been known as the Conscious mm. Doctor and definitely one of the greatest from our community, okay, that we've produced here in the Western Hemisphere. In a nutshell, brother, please, because I know some people are going to be coming in on this tip. What are the main health tips for us? What are the main health tips that you would like to touch on tonight for us yeah. as a community, what we should be doing, because a lot of people are living in fear right now. Talk to us, King. Yeah, so uh, um, keeping it in sync with that Sankofa, you know, theme um, and identifying, you know, ourselves, you know, um, I want to mention a book called Eat Right for Your Type, because um, we've also been given the wrong information about what foods are suited for us. You know that brother who's doing that cook um, show with you? Yes. I was watching that. I was watching that. And, and it's amazing. It's, it's, it's grand. You've got, you got some amazing, um, got some amazing um, you know, individuals you're working with from our community. It's really amazing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to springboard into something even greater. But... We, we've, we've borrowed most of our dietary, you know, um, behaviors from, um, from the Europeans. And um, we need to sound cold for our own. And, and I'm going to help, help us do that for a minute. Um, if you, you know, I fed, I fed a cat, I had a cat once and fed it vegetarian food because I was vegetarian. Now, 40 odd years I've been vegetarian. So I fed... That cat loved that little kitten. I fed it vegetarian food and it almost died. The eyes were starting to pop out. And I called my cousin who gave me the cat. I said, what's wrong with this cat? I'm feeding it the vegetarian food that I'm eating. Well, it, it's not looking well. And he said, listen, bring it to me now. And, and I'm, I'm going to take it back from you because you're going to kill the cat. You can't feed a cat vegetarian food. It needs to eat meat, fish, stuff like that. It's part of its own makeup. So as animals as well, we have, you know, certain things that are made for us like the cat. And so Dr. Dadamo, D-A-D-A-M-O, wrote this book called Eat Right for Your Type. And he's looking at different people who live in different, you know, um, demographic regions of the planet and looking at what their ancestors ate and how their bodies, their DNA was then able to, you know, um, accommodate a certain diet because your ancestors ate it and your body is now able to identify those foods and they're not fighting you. So that book's called Eat Right for Your Type. For example, he does this through a blood group. So instead of saying, you know, why you say me a Jamaica, say it's a rice and peas, rice and peas and ackee and sawfish and you say me, um, you know, um, chicken and rice and peas, I feel it's something that. And yo, Dr. Mark says so. When we say national dish, right? Rice and peas, ackee and sawfish. It's bongo peas in there. That's a few national dish. You see? Now, it's not true. And that's when we say sankofa, the first thing we have to do is what my brother said. Delete the lies. And whenever you delete the lies, the first thing happen is this sense of, this sense of um, lostness. 
Yes. Because you believe that lie for so long. Now you haven't got that lie. Like if we took white Jesus from you, you'd feel lost. You'd like, what do I do now? How do I feel safe? Where's my salvation? It'd be a problem. So with the diet thing, um, the most important thing I could give to our nation as a contribution for time to come is what our great ancestor said. Our great grand ancestor, Imhotep, said, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. I'm not gonna sit here and try to, you know, um, demonstrate how much I know about medicine, show off my PhD and BSc and masters of science and all of that 40 odd years of studying science. I can do that, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna tell you just some simple things like the very basic, they call them open secrets because they're all in front of you, but you just refuse to see, it, or you've been blinded by the things they've given you. You're looking at those things, that, you know, and so, Eat right for your type. Today, it has been proved, even against the industries that's created all these demonic de diseases like cancer that we never saw in the Bushmen of Africa. And in many of our nations, we never saw diabetes in, 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 our, in our nations. It didn't exist. And I learned this in the med school. First day, my first day at med school was the study of the Bushmen of Africa by Dr. Kelsey. The Bushmen of Africa. Now listen to this. Someone mentioned diabetes type 2 in their cooking and that they do stuff that helps, things like that. I think that needs to continue. We need to have cooks that are cooking for specific conditions that's now plaguing our nation. Cook food for cancer. Cook food for, if you have a vegetarian restaurant, and this, anyone would, uh, if you have a, uh, if you have a, a Caribbean restaurant, this is probably going to make you some money. Have a menu that's targeting people with certain illnesses, because I'm going to do that in my retreat. You might as well do it in your Caribbean food shop. And while I'm on the subject, Caribbean food shops, can we have some real veg and not just, it's embarrassing that especially Jamaicans say when you, you want some veg? Doc, doc, you want some veg in my food? I'm like, yeah, give me some veg. I want to get to my office or wherever and open it. It's cabbage. It's shredded cabbage. Black people, it, it's especially my Jamaican brothers and sisters, when we say veg, we mean broccoli. <laughs> we mean, do I need to break it down? We mean broccoli. We mean cauliflower. We mean aubergines, what you call eggplant. We mean all of the things, them, when they're vegetable, all of them, that's when you're looking at the veg, you know, you just mix up with so much things in your mouth that I explode with, 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 with the understanding. stomach. So can we do that? Because here's the thing, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food is, is almost the most powerful statement that's ever made about health. And if anyone in history reckon they have a more powerful statement, take it from me, they're fraud. They're fraud. Okay, so here we go. The vegan and vegetarian diet has now become the supreme way. You know, there's this book, my brother, called How to Eat to Live. And I had to lecture on that book. Uh, the, the, um, the, you know, the, the, what was it? The, the um, Knowledge is Power building on Oxbridge Road in Shepherd's Bush. Yes. This was about 30 odd years ago. I remember, I, bro. I was there, hundreds of the nation of Islam. Yes. I was on. Ministry of, I was a member of the Ministry of Health with Dr. Muhammad. It, we ran that thing, okay? How to give birth. We had a project called How to Give Birth oh, to a God. God, come on. To a God. Teach and it. so I want to big up Sister Delia Muhammad, who was Sister Delia X at the time. <laughs> and we worked very hard on this project for the sisters who wanted to give birth to gods. Um, that's another subject, but the, the diet thing is to let your medicine be your food, your food be your medicine, is going to take us right through to our, the very last day of our life where we breathe our very last breath, if we do the right thing. My grandfather lived to 104. Wow. In the 104. And the queen sent her congrats all the time. Anybody say that they've had that, I tell you if you know if they're lying, it won't come through the post. If they say they got it through the post, it's a lie. They knock your door, one of them beef eater men, knock the door and hand my, my mother, you know, in Chadwell Heath, she's now 84, handed her the congratulations from the queen. We have that. We had five generations alive. Why I'm saying this, it's diet, it's what you eat. 
That book was called How to Eat to Live. Live. What else should I, bro, what else should I talk about if you ask me how to, come on now. What <laughs> should, should I, I can go into biochemistry and break down C6H12O6. How the C stands for carbohydrates, the H stands for hydrogen, and the O stands for oxygen. Now, carbohydrates is made up of, and, and H2O, which is water, is really made up of two gases. Gases that magically make a liquid. No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to tell you how to eat to live, because you need to live. You know, we need to live. Life is the most important thing, sustenance of life. So, here we go. If you're eating all this red meat, here we go. If you're from Africa, and you're used to eating bush meat, that's fine because it's bush meat. Right now, you're not eating bush meat. Right now, you're eating meat that's been put on the fridge for years. And they inject that meat so it doesn't rot. How else can you keep meat that long without? Have you seen a dead animal in the, in the, in the Caribbean or Africa? I have. The belly starts to swell, then it busts, and the crows can smell it miles up. How they know when they come down and that thing, the stench. How can you have something that's died a year ago and there's no stench? You know how? And I'm going to say things that's going to put the listeners off and I need to do this. Teach us, brother. Teach us. Okay. You know how you manage to eat that meat and it's not stinking? I'll tell you how. They've put embalming fluid. And you're going to go, Dr. Mark, embalming fluid? How else do you keep a dead body from stinking without embalming it with some chemical that embalms the body? So they put chemicals, and you can go look at the names. I'm not going to confuse you with them. You can look them up. They, they, the, the FDA had to pass those, those chemicals before they could even inject them because they know that they're chemicals. Now, those chemicals is what you are taking into your body. Watch me. Work with me. It's stopping the meat from decaying. So it means if you gave that to a potato or gave that to a, uh, you know, one of these, uh, uh, you know, vegetables, and after six months you see the vegetable, the potato, the carrot is not decaying, would you eat it? Because I'm not. No, I wouldn't, because the vegetables that God made, they have a timeline and a time for where they decay. You can see the fruit is ripe, it's rotting. Don't eat it. So when you eat meat, you're eating. They call it in medicine, cadaver. It's a dead body and it was decaying. And guess what? This is a bit. It's definitely, it's definitely embalming chemicals, right? Embalming chemicals because you can't keep a dead body intact without stinking and, you know, de decomposing okay. without putting stuff. It's impossible, impossible. right? So, impossible. So when those decomposing um, anti-decomposing chemicals are now inside you, how can your body not say we don't identify this, this is something that belongs to the dead and you're a living being, how can you put in something that belongs to the dead in the coffin? We, 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 the body said, we're detecting decomposition here, even though they've injected it, we're an intelligent body. We know that there's decomposition here. This thing died a year ago. Your cells will not even know how long ago it died. If they, can get a, if they can get one of these guys in a lab to cut and test it, why do you think your body wouldn't know that it's an intelligent being made by the Most High? It will detect that this is a foreign outside entity and it will work against it on a cellular level. So there's a cellular fight going on when you eat that bad mind meat. I preach this all the time and I keep doing it because it's saving lives when we stop eating what they call the deaders. So vegan diet, vegetarian diet, I promise you, challenge me. I'm lying to you anyway. Me and you are <laughs> We're big liars. We're me lying, bro. We both got degrees in lying, right? <laughs> I got a lying degree a long time. I got many lying degrees, many lying degrees. So here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Challenge me. I, I, I'm shameless about being wrong because that's the pillows of mistakes. The pillows of success is made by mistakes. Mistakes are the pillows. So I'm shameless about being wrong. So challenge me. Go on a vegan diet for even three weeks, 21 days, because 21 days make a habit. Let me make this point about the 21 days because many people don't know this. Did you know, do you know how long it takes to hatch an egg? Mm, teach. 
I done it. I've done it. I'm not talking textbook. I personally done it as a done. child. I've done it. I've taken the egg. This is in Trelawney, Albertown, West Indies, Jamaica, West Indies. We had a we had a chicken farm. We sold chickens to the local supermarket in Christiana, right? So we had the yard fall and the, and the battery fall, as we call them, right? Now here we go. Do you know that if you take an egg and take the, the hen and put it on the egg, and uh, like I did this on my cellar, and leave it there, it comes off. You grab it, put it back on there. It runs off. You grab it, put it back on there. And it knows now you're trying to sell it something and it stays there. And you put three eggs there and it stays there. And I counted the days. It takes 21 days and you see that beak coming out and the little chick is coming out, 21 days. And I done that two or three times. I then started to study science and heard in psychotherapy and, sci and, and psychology, right? And psychiatry, all of them yes. bear, witness, bear witness to for a human being to change habitual patterns through their neural uh, um, circuits, right? Um, it takes 21 days. And I thought, I thought, there you go. When I see my patients, I'm gonna use that neuro-linguistic programming technology and give them 21 days to change their habits from eating meat to a vegan vegetarian diet. You can go back to eating meat. You can go back, it's okay. I just want you to see my lie. See, yeah. see the palpitations stop, see the pains in your knees, arthritis, rheumatoid stop, see the fact that you couldn't sleep before stop, see your tummy go in, see you feel that wellness, feel connected, that you will feel and experience in less than 21 days, but challenge me and do it, because I've been doing it now for over 35 years, and all my patients, are, they're listening now, many of them, the vegetarian, the vegan, and if you can't stay with a vegan vegetarian, I'll come up with a new one, just so we can meet everyone. It's meet called everyone. flexitarian. 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 Yeah, I'm <laughs> flexitarian. I mean, I, I eat fish once or twice a week. Yes. But flexitarian means you can eat vegan on Monday, you can go vegetarian on Tuesday, you can go, you know, eat a piece of chicken on Wednesday, and then you can go eating vegan on Thursday and vegetarian Friday and mix up things on the weekend because you like your that. Yeah, as a yeah. process. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. A slow, slow sankofa. Eventually, what happens, every time they eat the vegetarian and vegan diet foods in that week, they notice. They notice the smell of their feces. They can tell it's toxic. They can tell the I have patients say, you know, since I've become vegan, my toilet doesn't smell at all. Because why? Because you're taking vegetables of the earth, the green stuff, with the chlorophyll. That's constantly cleaning and working like Emotep said, let your food be your medicine. He, he, meant, vegetarian. he meant vegetarian and vegan foods. Brother, I mean, this has just been crazy, crazy tonight, brother. Crazy tonight. Brother, um... Before we just go into a few questions, uh, where I know that once I start to advertise that you was going to be on my show, so many people text me testimonies about them um, being saved by yourself, health health wise, men, um, in terms of their minds, spirituality. Where can brothers and sisters? We got over four hundred people on the platform still on right now, brother. Where can we find you, brother? Please tell us. You can't leave us like that. Okay, okay. So, um, um, my clinic at the moment, my latest clinic, is um, is a flagship of it of them all. It's it's Medi Park Clinic. It's in Green Lanes Five. So, so here we go. It's Medi Park M E D I hyphen Park Clinic, Medi Park Clinic, and that's five seven three Green Lanes, London N eight zero Romeo Lima. It's not. Just a naturopathic clinic. It's a it's 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 the biggest clinic in Haringey, and I spoke to Dr. Baines today, and he said to me, he said, Mark, he's in his seventies. He's one of the only re remaining doctors from that batch of doctors that trained me forty odd years ago. And so he said he will come on the show, on my radio show, on any platform. He says, Mark, I'll be happy. In, if, he says, if you build a medical school, a naturopathic medical school, I'm coming to work with you. I'm with you. He said today, when I told him about this Zoom 
he, he gave me a couple of warnings. He said, some of the things you've been saying about the no sold, which we can use as an as a uh, you know alternative for the COVID-19 vaccine, we can't use that or speak about that openly anymore because um, uh, it's dangerous um, for, for um, we, we get targeted. He runs a pharmacy. I'm now working in a practice where it's an NHS registered practice. I am a registered manager, CQC registered. I didn't even mention that in my CV. It took me a year to become a CQC registered manager, which means Listen, I can employ- brothers and sisters. I can employ dentists, doctors, nurses. I can manage a hospital. I can go back to Ghana to, Jamaica, anywhere, manage doctors, employ them, even where I'm not, employ them, sack them, whatever, audit them, CQC registered manager. So um, that's another string that I'm, I'm really proud that I achieved that because I haven't seen anyone. Proud else. for you, brother. Proud for seen. you. Well, Medipark Clinic has psychiatrists, psychologists, GPs, it's got um, uh, urologists. It's got paediatrician, we've got phlebotomy, we take blood, we do the PCR test, we do all the tests, all blood tests, we do sputum tests, we do stool tests, we do urine tests, we do every single test that the hospital does, and we send it off to the TDL, which is the doctor's lab, and we get a turnaround in 24 hours, so it won't take long as your hospital appointment. We've got ultrasound scan, we've got a sonographer, we've got a radiologist, we've got, we got a lot there, and so um, that's Medipark Clinic, um, 573 Green Lanes, London, N80, Romeo Lima. And, and on top of all that, they've got me there. And I run the naturopathic department. I said all that to say this, because I said it to Dr. Baines today. Medipark Clinic is probably the only clinic in England. And again, I'm happy if someone mm, proves me wrong. So Google it and prove me wrong. I'm happy because, you know, fine, I get it right. But um. To my knowledge, Medipark Clinic is the only clinic in England, in the UK, that has an array of registered doctors, medical doctors, registered with the GMC, the Gen General Medical Council, right? Because you can be a doctor and you're not registered with the GMC. All our doctors at Medipark Clinic are registered with the GMC, and we are the only clinic, I believe, in England that have all that array of doctors registered with the NHS, GMC, we're private, and at the same time, we have a naturopathic department in under that same umbrella. Naturopathic means, that's me, I can send a patient of mine upstairs to get an ultrasound scan. No naturopath in England can do that. I can send my patient to have a teeth move because it's causing her to have Bell's palsy. It's causing problems. The tooth could be, I can send her to, to Dr. Jim. Brothers and, say, and Dr. sisters, are you listening to Dr. Walcott tonight? That's the man. I, Come I on. Had, we have seen them in my surgery. And this is, this is really serious. This is a serious point. I saw a patient, I see a number of patients that's di diabetic diabetes type two, and they're on three different types of medication, um, metformin, insulin, and glycoside. And, 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 and all diabetics out there, they know these drugs. Metformin, glycoside, and insulin. Now, listen to this. When you take insulin, it's because you're insufficient. You don't have enough insulin secreted from your pancreas. So let's say that goes left. When you have um, type two, it means you have too much insulin secreted. One is insufficient, one is too much. So let's say that goes that way. How can you have two uh, types of conditions going both opposite and you give them one drug for this and one other drug for the other one? The person's on insulin, they're on metformin and this is that. So I took this patient next door. That's my saying that there's no clinic in England, naturopathic like this. I took that patient, I said, wait here one second. I went next door, I said, Dr. Issa, I've got a patient next door. He's a GP. I've got a patient next door, doctor. And, and really, I mean, they're on three medications, insulin, metformin, and glycoside. And he shook his head. He shook his head like this. This is a GP. He's like, um, yes, Mark, sometimes they do. I said, doctor, it's wrong. Can you help me? Hey. Are you listening? Can I'm you listening. help me? Can you help me to wean this patient off these many medications and give them the right ones they need and reduce the milligrams as well? He said, yes, ma. Send them for a test. We do the HB1C test to see where their diabetes is at. And we can, we can take them off insulin. 
once we see that information. And we can take them off glycoside also, and then we can regulate the milligrams they need and measure the blood of HB1C and see what, how it's doing and get them tailor-made. They're not doing that in the, in the clinics in England. We're doing that with a naturopathic doctor supported by a GP. Nowhere in the UK you get that. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm humbled and honored that the most I've chosen me to be, again, the first person in England to have done that. And Dr. Baines congratulated me today. Thank you. Brothers Thank and you. sisters, show some love to our brother, the conscious doctor, Dr. Mark Walcott tonight. Come on. Can we have a number of doctors listening in the background? Um, brother Carl and Fitzpatrick. Brother Carl and Fitzpatrick. Can we see you, Mikey? This is one of our, one of our regulars, brother. He's another doctor himself. And I love this brother. I love his brother, but um, he's, he's one of our young brothers going through the doc, um, the medical world. I don't know if Dr. Carl and Fitzpatrick is with us right now, but we've got a number of doctors in the background. And brothers, I want to see what our brother, our fellow doctor says about this doctor, because Dr. Walker is the man for me, just the man for me as well. Um, Sister Jurita, I, I said to the community that today's show will be slightly longer. We're going to extend it by 15 minutes. Sister Jurita, please, um, brothers and sisters, if you'd like to ask a question yourself to Dr. Walcott, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I know there's a number of questions. Now, we can't go through all the questions because of time. But Dr. Walcott, can you please be as brief as you can with each question so we can get through as many as we can? If you'd like to ask Dr. Walcott okay. your own question or to make a comment on what he said tonight, please raise your hand and I will bring you in. Sister Juita, please. Hi there, Doctor. How are you? Hi there. Um, a few questions. Uh, the first, um, obviously very uh, current at the moment, we've got uh, coronavirus, which is everywhere. Uh, there are people asking, uh, how would you treat it? Best way to treat it? And will you be taking the vaccine? Should, should black people take the vaccine? I'm going to answer all those questions. Okay, so simply. First one, get your pens for this one. They won't like what I'm going to say to you all. Um, I'm going to give you the cure, one of the cures for the coronavirus, COVID-19, okay? It's ivermectin. There's many different ways to approach curing it. It's not the only thing. I've got herbal stuff that do this as well. But, you know, if someone gets really sick and you've got a drawer full of herbs, I mean, it's, it's, it can be tricky unless you've got it in your cupboard. When you've got the, the symptoms, the taste gone, the throat, the lungs, the pneumonia setting in, you, you can't start boiling herbs. You need to be ready as if, if someone attacks you, you've got the protective mechanisms there to protect yourself. It's ivermectin, I-V-E-R-M-E-C-T-I-N. It's a pharmaceutical um, anti-parasitic drug. I-V-E-R-M-E-C-T-I-N, ivermectin. And then the other one is doxycycline, D-O-X. Y, C, Y, L, I, N, E, doxycycline, D, O, X, Y, C, Y, C, L, I, N, E, doxycycline, right? And then the last one is zinc. These three things will not just kill the coronavirus, but it actually prophylaxis, um, prophylactically protects you if you take this, if you're going to be exposed um, to it. And, and again, don't believe, definitely don't believe me on this one because this is life and death. So don't believe me. Go on YouTube to find out what's the milligrams and the dosage and administration, just to make sure that you do a bit of the work and that no one goes around saying, no, Dr. Mark said, go and see. When you go and you see professors, MDs, doctors all over the world using it on their patients on the front line. And you're going to hear one of them say a hundred cases they saved a hundred cases with ivermectin, doxycycline, and and zinc. Okay. The other question is: Am I going to take the vaccine? Um, no. But I want to say this. Um, I want to say this. I want to say this. Um, on my last show, last two shows, I've been encouraging listeners not to focus on what other people are doing to take or not to take the vaccine. And I also said people are going to take the vaccine because they have to, right? And so um, I gave an example. 
a black man who is the head of a corporate company, CEO, is a multi-billionaire like Trump. And we can hail him and say, at last, we have somebody who's doing something that represents us. And he's been told that unless he takes a vaccine and all his staff, he has to close down. Are you telling me we should tell him he should close down? Because so it's one of those um, conundrums that you leave to the individual to make that choice, like someone who's got cancer. You make them decide if they want chemo or radio or herbal or whatever the path they want to take. It's immoral to tell people what to do. It's immoral to tell people, ah, you shouldn't take the vaccine. I'm a doctor and I, I've been talking about all the, you know, the Moderna, the, 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 how it affects your DNA. I know, I know. But you don't, you don't think I'm going to continue doing my job if I go out there and be this anti-vaxxer. And Dr. Mark is renowned now by the government, by everyone who's in the medical world, saying that you heard of this Dr. Mark, he's a perfect anti-vaxxer. Now they've got saying the BAME won't take the vaccines. Dr. Mark is part of the problem. I'm not going to be anyone's, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm not going to be crucified by anyone for anyone. My children said to me, Dad, don't be a martyr. Don't die for the cause, live for it. And so I'm not going to be talking about people to vaccine or not vaccine on my show or anything else. And my final point on this, because I was asked to keep it succinct, in my opinion, it has now become immoral to ask someone if they're going to take the vaccine. I think before maybe, but now it's rolling out. I think it's immoral because your best friends are going to take the vaccine and don't tell you that they've taken it. And it's going to be like that from now onwards on to whenever. Um, everyone, no, everyone's not going to tell you that they've taken it. And um, there are going to be some people that have to take it. And so um, I, I, I won't take it. But watch this, finally. What if the government says to me, Dr. Walcott, your Medipark clinic, with all that glorious achievement you just mentioned, will come to an end if you don't take the vaccine. Then I have to think of setting up another clinic that's not in HS base and stuff like that. And I am thinking about it. When that time comes, I'm a CQC registered manager. They're going to say, you're going to need to uh, vaccine if you're, going to, if you're going to work with all these doctors and people. Where you are is such a center of, it's, it's a dangerous, you know, we deal with safety. You're going to have to demonstrate that safety, Dr. Walker, being, you know, demonstrate leadership and governance. I know all the words they're going to use. And so I, I'll have to think about that, but um, I, I, I'm not going to get take the vaccine. I'm not going to take the vaccine. I'll tell you that straight. But I just want to say, whoever's asking those questions, for um, future reference, they should um, be um, a little bit more reserved with asking. It's like asking a woman her, her age. And in the future, it's going to become more and more like that. Um, Regin, you take the vaccine, and Amanda said, no, 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 and he's taking it because he's saying you shouldn't even ask me that. Right? It's one of them. Like that. Anyway, no, the answer is no. I'm ready. I'm wow. Saying, I'm, wow. Yeah. A doctor, I'm, I'm telling you straight, brother. I have no. never. I don't think anyone else on this platform. I have never heard a doctor speak speak like you. Never, brother. Wow. That you've changed. You've changed the world. Um, no, I, from you, come on. No, You're brother, I've this. never heard a doctor talk like you, brother. Never, never. Um, Sheila Johnson, Sheila Johnson, can you unmute yourself, Sister Sheila Johnson? Can you ask our doctor your question, please? And doctor, if we can be yeah. as succinct as possible, okay, my king, bless up, Sister yeah, Sheila. Good, yeah, good evening. Um, my son's been diagnosed with yeah. Gilbert syndrome. Um, so could you tell me, um, I don't know. It's it's a it's a really tricky one because it brick it he has um episodes of it like every few months where he just vomits constantly, loses half of his body weight in twenty four hours, can't do anything. What did they tell you was the cause of it? They didn't. They didn't tell me the cause of it. Precisely. So most of his diseases with the name syndrome. Mm. That's why I asked you. There's a word in medicine called etiology, which means causation. Yeah. See how you got it. And so when they say syndrome, mm. 99.999 infinite infinitum, they won't tell you what the causation is. In fact, 99.999 diseases that we study in med school, the etiology is unknown. What's the cause of diabetes mellitus type 1 or type 2? They don't know. 
So, I mean, so, okay, so assist you in what you just said. Number one, it's also on, um, it's, um, I, I am restricted to giving information um, by law for chronic diseases over any medium without knowing the patient's medical history. And that's because I'm a registered doctor. So Did can I bring him to you? Can I bring him to your clinic? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, that's all I wanted to know, really, yeah. That's a great point, Sheila. That will scan him. We'll see yeah. his brain, his ears, his nose. Oh, don't say we've lost our doctor. I suspect, I suspect it's a virus. Please, don't let us say we lost our doctor at this point. Sheila, the good point is, is that, yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Where are thou, Brother Andrew? Oh, I'm there. It looks like, I'm, it looks like my, 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 my internet went down. Look, at, as soon as you start speaking like this, brother, my internet's now, now playing up, King. Gremlins, bro. It's the gremlins, gremlins. We, we know, like, brother, every time this happens, every time we talk about this subject, all of a sudden my internet just left me just now. Um, Sister Sheila, doctor's giving you an answer there. Please bring your, bring your friend or your cousin. This is the doctor that I trust. Bring him. The number, let me give the number now. The number to call for appointments. And I, let me give you the number for appointments and then the number for the clinic, for the dentist, for all of that stuff and ultrasound scan and all of that. The, the number for my PA, for my appointments, because we get so filled that they've asked me to separate them. So for appointments for myself, for scans, for my Miracle Tonic, um, which is ridiculous, um, you call Althea on 07958. Hi, Althea. Hi, darling. 07958-316-750. Alpha is absolutely fantastic. She's wonderful. She's made for the job she's doing. I think she was created. I think the most I created her and said, you know what? You're going to be needed later in the future for your nation when Dr. Mark's working. You're going to need the per you're going to be the perfect person. And I think that's what she is. So call Alfie on that number and she'll fit you in with an appointment. If the booking for appointments I heard is three months now. Wow. Um I want to say this with humility, with humility. It will become more than three months. So don't jump when you hear three months and say, oh, let me leave it, because it will be four, then five months. I promise you that it will be. So um, the way to do this is book it with her. Tell her, tell her that I said this. That you book it, but as soon as there's a conversation, and that could be within 24 hours, you will get an appointment. So it could be really quick, but just get in there. You get in there. So okay. that you're fantastic. All right, Thank, thank you, Sheila. Thank, thank you, so you. Much, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Brother Calder, Brother Calder, Stapleton. Yeah. Yes, my king. What's your question, yes, bro? Greetings, greetings. Good evening, my king. Yes. Greetings. Yes, greetings. Bless. Bless, bless. Yes. yes, my question is um, my niece suffers from MS, and growing up, all our family can like party, party people, love to dance, then all of a sudden, MS took us on crutches in a wheelchair. Um, is there anything that can be done to reverse yeah. this? Yeah, yeah, you brought your touch. Like, African brothers and sisters are suffering with the MS. I don't uh, know yeah. why. Yeah, there's loads of MS sufferers, and the, the treatment, I don't know why the, 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 the corporation, as my sister, sister Adele said, corporation is they're writing the narrative of what you do with the disease. So, here, 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 here it is. Um, multiple sclerosis was many, many decades ago. Yeah. Proved, um, cannabis was proved to be the most, one of the most effective treatments for MS okay. sclerosis. And there's so many trials, not with herbal doctors and naturopaths like myself. Yeah. Actual scientists and, 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 and medical doctors, MDs, did trials. And you can see them on YouTube. If you type in cannabis and MS, you'll see a European doctor give a patient cannabis in a form called Sativex. Uh, there's about 10 different pharmaceutical cannabis preparations. They okay. squirt it on the And go and look at it, my brother. I, 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 don't uh, know how okay. to, I don't know how to say this without people saying it's a lie. But then I'm a liar anyway, so here goes. <laughs> There are, case, there are cases on YouTube right now. Yeah. You can go and look. Right now it's there. 
where you'll see the doctor squirt the stuff, give the patient the cannabis, and within half an hour, there was an English, there's an English lady that couldn't get out of bed in less than four to five minutes, and she, she was eat, eating like this. The spoon yeah, couldn't go yeah. They gave her the cannabis, and she said this, real Victorian type of English lady. She says, you know, they, <laughs> they tell me I should only take only two squirts, but it makes me feel good. So I take about three or four, and they see her go <laughs> riding. After 45 minutes, she's horse riding. One what? guy gets this out and goes shopping. I mean, it's like this without it. So the answer is cannabis, in short. It's cannabis, research it, go on YouTube, start the, the research. And when I, and if you want assistance with how to get some of the best manufacturers in the UK, then contact mm. myself and I'll give you guidance where you can get the suppository, because there's a lot of cannabis talk at the moment, but yeah, you need three yeah. things in cannabis to treat these kind of um, you know disorders. One is the oil, and yeah. oil, be used on the tongue. Uh -huh. The other one, is the tincture, is used sublingual under the tongue, and okay. then the sub goes up the rectum. And in females with um, uterine cancer and uterine issues, I have cured a uterine cancer with these three types of cannabis. The, really? the tincture and the suppository. She put the suppository, the cannabis suppository, up the vagina, it goes to the uterus. And it started to shrink many of the um, the fibroids, uh, not the fi fibroids, but the cancer tumors. And I've got the yeah. proof from the oncologist that it was, as he said, it was unbelievable because they couldn't see the cancer. And I've got a number of cases like that. But yeah. Fantastic. Doctor? Well, yes, give yes, 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 Powerful yes. question, King. Several people in the chat room said, thank you for asking that question, soldier. Respect. So proud respect. to you, my brother. Thank you so much, Mikey. Likewise. Um, doctor, we've got a few more people, large guys. But before we go, Jurita, give us one, one more question from the Q and A. Sure. Um, I've got a lot of people asking about several different conditions, but the couple that have come up, um, I think you've covered cancer a little bit, and I know that there's yeah. a book out there called Demystifying Cancer by Devin Morgan, which is absolutely fantastic at explaining lots of bits about that. But the other one that's come up is lupus. So um, are there ways that we can uh, deal with autoimmune, uh, autoimmune okay. conditions like that? To keep this one really short, and again, there's certain things I'm not permitted to say. Um, like I spoke about cannabis, but to speak about the milligrams and how much they should take um, one gram a day or half a gram a day, like that's stuff that has to be discussed with the patient um, in the surgery and so forth. It's more confidential. So with lupus, I'm going to tell you um, um, how you can really, I mean, cure your lupus. Um, so get a book to start with, so it doesn't sound like Dr. Walker made it up. There's a book called um, Miraculous Results with Extremely High Doses of Vitamin D3. It's a long mouthful. Mi miraculous Results with Extremely High Doses of Vitamin D3. Mir miraculous Results with Extremely High Doses of Vitamin D3 by Jeff T. Bowles, J-E-F-F-T. B-O-W-L-E-S. In that book, he explains how to cure lupus with vitamin D3, and I did it with a patient. And it's, it's taking it really high, as high as 50,000 IU, and you, so you, need, you may need assistance, but get the book and read that. And he even took 100,000, unheard of, 100,000. And it's only when you take things that high with assistance that you see the effects, how it impacts the efficacy on that disease. Otherwise, your GP will tell you, you need to take 400, 400 IU, the required daily amount of D3. And then of course, in the book, you will explain that you need to take K2, something that even doctors, GPs don't know. You need to take vitamin K2 with the D3. If you want another book that will break that down, it's called, Calcium and, 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 the, and K2 paradox. Calcium and the vitamin K2 paradox. It's ridiculous, ridiculous, especially for women going through menopause who take calcium. You need to take calcium with vitamin K2. Otherwise, it's circulating in your circulatory system where you don't need calcification. 
and it causes heart attacks, arteriosclerosis, atheroma, and all kind of narrowing of the blood vessels due to buildup of the debris and all sorts of plaque from the calcium not going into the bones where you need it to be stored. You need it to be stored there. You use vitamin K2, drives it into the bones where we store it, not circulated in your system. So those two books will help any individual get on top of their lupus situation. And then what are additional things they need? They will need to consult me because I can't Absolutely, tell you. Absolutely, brother. Your Absolutely, lupus. Absolutely, brother. Bring them home. Know. Bring them home to you, King. It's not professional. I can't do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Faye Hamilton. Yes. Thank you for your patience, beloved. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Will. Um, Thank you, Queen. I just wanted to thank Dr. Walcott. He's been recommended to me a few times. But um, just researching myself, I was on 38 tablets a day, three injections a week, and having to go in for cancer treatment two times a week for blood tests. I found it hard to even crawl to the bathroom. And wow. I've managed by doing the plant-based diet to I can walk for three miles now. I mean, I'm playing with my child. I'm, I'm working round the clock. Um, I, I still want to come and see you just to make sure I'm doing the right thing because some of the things you said to me really kind of resonated today. You know, the rice and peas and nuts and salt. I don't, obviously don't eat fish anymore, but, you know, saying that that, that isn't, the right and the action isn't for us. So um, I just want to give everyone, you know, a bit of hope and just to say that, you know, you're not, when you speak, it, it, uh, it's for us to actually go away, think about what you said and go and research for ourselves and we can heal ourselves. The question I did want to ask you is even though I'm, I feel okay. Every winter, for some reason, the doctor says that my lymphocyte count goes up. Can I ask you, it's been happening for the last six years, and I've tried to tell the doctor that I think there's something with the weather that's affecting me. Would you agree with that? Or Definitely. Definitely. Um, and, and I can tell you what it is as well. Um, and, you know, sister, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm sorry about your previous diagnosis. You seem to have got on top of it. But I'm, I'm going to help you right now, even with, without coming for a consultation. And for all other cancer sufferers anywhere in the world, I'm going to give a few pointers that I can mention on any medium, okay? I'm going to go through what I call the cancer protocol. I generally don't do this unless I'm in the surgery, but I can do a number of things that, um, yeah, even for the CQC, I can, I can say some of the things I'm about to say. So for all cancer cases, I'm going to mention things that if you're not doing these things, Dr. Mark says it's, 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 it's negligence if you're not doing these things, if you have cancer. Lists. One, you need to stop sugar. It's self-harm if you have cancer. You need to stop sugar. And all the places where you're getting sucrose, sugars, any sweeteners, sweetening, anything, you need to stop them. And I, I like sugar. I'm, I'm not one of these anti-sugar people. I'm into brown sugar. I'm not into white sugar. And I think molasses is ridiculously incredible. Um, but for cancer sufferers and for people with diabetes, unfortunately, it's your enemy now. For the time being, it's your enemy. Don't, don't have anything with it. And if you struggle with this, then do it in, in phases where you stop it for a period, you know, and, and, then, and then maybe treat yourself. But ideally, good, better, best. The best is drop sugar, um, go vegan, not vegetarian, vegan. If you have cancer, don't go vegetarian, go vegan. And that's why Dr. Sebi said, go vegan. Be careful what you eat or it might eat you, Dr. Sebi. So go vegan, um, take probiotics. You have to, it's self-harm and negligence if you've got cancer, you're not taking probiotics. I'm dropping the list here. Uh, probiotics, the next one, 
and, and research it. Type in cancer. Whatever I say, I'm lying. I've got a lying certificate. Type in cancer and probiotics. Cancer and the importance of probiotics. So you're going to be blown. Type it. And the next one, vitamin C. If, you, if you've got cancer, you're not taking vitamin C, someone's ripped you off. If you saw a doctor and they didn't put you on vitamin C, high dosage, you've been ripped off. It needs to be liposomal vitamin C. L-Y-P-O-S-O-M-A-L. Lipo or liposomal. Liposomal vitamin C. It's as powerful as IV intravenous vitamin C. And while we're on the subject, our surgery does IV vitamin C for cancer patients and patients with COVID and pneumonia, IV vitamin C and Motivit IV. Right, so, um, this is, so that's the, the vitamin C. Here's the next one. Um, you must be taking Leotrils, vitamin B17 in the form of um, apricot kernels, or the seeds, the seeds of four apples. Pick them out and chew them if you don't want to buy the apricot kernels. The apple seeds have this B17 leotrols, it's called, and it's, it's got them. So you can chew the seeds of four apples and it will give you what you need to tackle your cancer. Here's the next one. Very few doctors I know talk about this. I've never, ever heard any doctor mention this one. You need to take iron if you have cancer, what they do say is you need oxygen because cancer defeats you where you don't have oxygen. And we all heard that, but what they forget is that if you're anemic, you're down in oxygen, the cancer's having a field day, it's winning. So you need to take iron, but iron's a problem. So you need, I discovered a new one um, a few weeks ago while being here, it's called liposomal iron, hey. Just like the vitamin C, it's called liposomal iron, and that's really good. And just make sure if you've got cancer that you're not anemic. If, you've got, if you're anemic and you've got cancer, really, I mean, you're down in oxygen. You need to be up, up in oxygen. Some people get an oxygen chamber and, and do it daily, and that fights the cancer because oxygen is that powerful. So um, that's the iron. Um, what, what else? Um, if you're able to exercise, Start with start with the rebounder, the trampoline, because if it's breast cancer, um, while we're the subject, that trampoline is a um, 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 it's it's a preventative for breast cancer. Okay. Um, let me say it again: the trampoline, aka rebounder, it's a. I, I mean to come out with some um, more information and maybe write a little manual or something about it. The trampoline, a.k.a. rebounder, is a, um, uh, how would I say this? It's a, um, so we say, we say, we say, um, we say preventative is the word. It's a preventative for ladies who get breast cancer, lumps and stuff and tumors and cysts, because the lymphatic, the lymphatic system becomes blocked for so many reasons, when you bounce on this um, rebounder, it, it forces the lymphatics to drain. So does swimming, which is not really that recommended now because of the COVID, but a bouncer you can do in your front room. If you, re if you Google, all right, Google importance and benefits of rebounding, rebounder, you will be on, uh, you, you're gonna think, why is our society so wicked? Why, the, the, why didn't they have that in every single surgery? That ladies, if you use this rebounder, NASA discovered it, that the health in rebounding, because they have to get their, 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 their guys these, um, going up to space to get used to you know, all this um, weightlessness. And they discovered that it, it solved many other problems, circulation, muscular tenacity, you know, circulation in the brain, coordination, um, focus, Crazy. So um, look at that. Again, finally, because we need to move on. Finally, but this is for cancer sufferers. Finally, um, so there's a rebounder. Um, um, definitely, um, um, here's the next one is, um, so you, you vegan, um, suppose it's, it's can't go suppose, um, uh, dietary change, um, the, the probiotics, um, iron, I'm going over them again, and there's something I forgot. There's one more I need to give you. The vitamin C liposomal iron, there's another one. 
Um, uh, we can come back to that one, Doctor. Uh, we've only got five minutes left, but God, we've given food. We've given food. Exercise, exercise was the last one. And of course, there's affirmations and some ceremonial, like, you know, like a candle that's, you say positive affirmations. It's NLP. Um, visualize, you know, the outcome you want. And, and, and that should help mentally. Oh physically and spiritually, because sometimes people become so afraid, I've got cancer, I've got cancer. That's what killed them. That's what yes. killed them. 60 Minutes in America did a, a show where um, doctors would say to patients, oh, you've got six months to live. Listen to this. And people die in six months. It so came to pass that they told someone they had cancer and gave him six months. He died and it came up. He actually was a wrong diagnosis. He didn't have cancer, but he still died. Still died. Because of the yeah, mind, mind, the power of the mind, brother. Jamaican saying, there's a Jamaican saying, it's so funny. It says, um, when, um, when bad luck take, when bad luck take you, empty gun shoot you. It mm. means even if a person thinks, oh my God, he's got a gun, and he's so afraid, it's an empty gun. The person dropped dead, the person even pull, pull the trigger because of fear, he just dropped dead. And it, it, yeah, fear. When bad luck take you, even empty gun shoot you. So when person tells you that you, that's why they stop doctors from predicting now. They're not supposed to tell you. Because yeah. so I stopped it, taking all their tablets. I just, one day I just woke up and I just said, I just prayed and I said, I'm not taking it anymore. I'm not doing it. And all the tablets are all piled up. If you see my cupboard, you wouldn't believe it. They've given, I've got covers of chemo tablets and I haven't touched any. And I've ne I've lost three stone in weight. As I said, I'm walking, as I said, yeah. you know, I'm able to do stuff. So I thank you because without people like you teaching us, I would never know. I know, I know. I feel it for you. I can feel you, by the way. I can feel you. I know. I know. That's why I took the time to share this with you. I can feel you and I know what you're saying. It, it, can you imagine other people? I, I've got a 22 year old patient with cancer watching, probably watching right now. She's lost this vision in one eye. She was in ICU. She had a stroke. She had a stroke and came out diabetic because it's probably spread to the pancreas. Lost one, one, one eye. She's gained masses of weight. And she, it's crazy. She, she, it's, spread to, it's, it's spread to three, the, the uterus, the liver, and the lungs, I think. Come on, she's 22 years old. So I remember the thing I wanted to say now. It's um, Wait, three... Doctor, doctor, drugs doctor, doctor. Are, Wormwood, black walnut hull, and clothes. These Dr. Hilda Clark used to cure cancer. Look up the book called Cures to All Cancer by Dr. Hilda Clark. They will never want me to tell you about that. Cures to All Cancers by Dr. Hilda Clark. And the three antiparasitics to kill the cancer virus or antiparasitic parasites is wormwood, black walnut hull, and clothes. And you can go online and see all of that information because I'm lying. That's right. Brother, <laughs> you're, you're, there's you no so doctor much. like you. you Absolutely fantastic. We bow to you, Sister Faye. Many people are blessing you for your question yes, and your spirit, sister. Really all right, now listen up, brothers and sisters. We have literally run out of time. There are millions of questions in the QA. I think, Doctor, you're going to, I'm begging you to come back on the show, okay, big brother. Um, but I'm before we finish, yeah. um, Sister, is that Sister Tan? I've got Tan P on, on the screen. Great. Can, can, you, can you unmute yourself, sister? And doctor, believe me, brother, we, we just today alone you've shown why we love you so much. I don't hear people talk like you. Um, sister Tan, can you please ask your question, please? And doctor, we've only got two minutes. So, Sister okay. Tan. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I have to be real fast. Yeah. Uh, so at the moment, um, I have a chronic underlying um, disease. Um, I'm, I think in a few working days, I'll probably be going to see a rheumatologist. Um, I think it's arthritis, it's self-diagnosed, but yeah. all the symptoms are there, like infl inflammation, uh, joint pain. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been on a plant-based diet for about a year now, yeah. a year and a bit, um, but I'm also pescatarian. So yeah. 
you know, I don't exactly know what's causing this, what's triggering it. I'm hoping it's nothing severe. Um, if it is arthritis, then yeah, I guess I just need you to recommend, give yeah, me some yeah. recommendations. And the thing is, it's inconsistent. It's very inconsistent. So it just comes and goes. This is like the third time it's just made some sort of appearance, so. Okay, so very quickly, because we run out of time, um, it's probably RA, rheumatoid arthritis, which they've deemed now as an autoimmune disease, which it may not be, but it means they're going to give you steroids, right? And corticosteroids, one of them. And um, it's not good because then you're stuck on that. And the, 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 the impact, the, 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 the ongoing effects, negative effects of steroids, is, is another thing. People with lupus know this. Even, even the um, hydroxyquinine is, is a steroid in one sense because they use it to fight lupus. But anyway, corticosteroids, and um, they're dangerous. I wouldn't go on them because you can solve your rheumatoid arthritis if it is rheumatoid arthritis. If it's osteoarthritis, if you've had children and it's happened since having children, then the, 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 the joint pains will be in the hips and the knees, the childbearing joints. My right hand. <laughs> it's rheumatoid arthritis, then it's RA, which they now call autoimmune disease. I'm going to be very quick. You need to get yourself, um, okay, it's called, it's called, um, it's called, um, uh, it's made by a company called Solgar, Solgar, okay. Ultimate bone support, ultimate bone support, you need to get devil's claw. You need to get um, glucosamine sulfate and chondroitin sulfate. And you need to get shark cartilage. Let me say them again. You need to get um, you need to get ultimate bone support made by a company called Solgar. Ultimate bone support. Then you need a combination of glucosamine and chondroitin. GLU, GLU. C O S A G L U glu C O S A M I N E glucosamine and then and chondroitin C H O N D R O I T I N glucosamine and chondroitin get them very high milligrams as much as fifteen hundred milligrams and then you need shark cartilage. That's to repair joints and to repair the ligaments if ligaments are involved. And then finally, the painkiller, the one that will help with the pain, is called Devil's Claw. And you can take that internally, and then you take also the Devil's Claw gel and put on the joints. And, and that should help. And, and then I recommend you use the, 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 um, the rebounder to strengthen the bone density and get more mobility with, 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 without doing it on a solid ground, you've got to support the buoyancy, support from the, um, the spring, from the, um, the rebounder uh, trampoline. And, and that's going to work. Yeah, mm. what approach is that? Oh, Amazon, Argos, uh, you, and go on, um, go on um, Amazon's for all the stuff I just mentioned, all the stuff I mentioned, Amazon, where you get it. Um, and go online and look up um, benefits of a rebounder. You really will blow you away. It really blow you away. It's ridiculous. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Sister Tan, please stay strong. Is that is that your name, Sister Tan? I want to make sure I'm respecting your name. Yeah, Tan Tanika, but you can say Tan. No problem. Okay, thank you. Tanika, please stay strong, my queen. Beautiful question. And we pray for you at every single moment, sister. Bow to you, my queen. Thank you for your um your your patience. All right, very last one, boss one. Futon, I think. Is it boss one? Boss one, food, food on. Yeah. Yes. Boss one, food on. Greetings. Yes, my love. Hello, Well, go on, brethren. Brothers and sisters, uh, kings and queens. Yes, yes, man. What a beautiful um, webinar tonight, man. Um, and I give thanks for, you know, brother Andrew, Mohammed, and the team um, to hosting this for us. And especially in this time of need. Exactly. We need a lot of our people to go and support us, you know what I mean, and come forward and give a helping hand, you know what I mean? So, you know, say the health is well. Bow to you, King. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not going to be long. Because I know you say <laughs> time's limited. Yeah. Um, so my question is, I've just been recently diagnosed with um, 
fluid around my joints, around one of my knees. Um, I'm not too sure what can be done to kind of remove that, Dr. Mark. Dr. Mark? I didn't hear all of that, but I know where he's going. I know okay. where he's going. Um, he's unstable. Um, he's here. Um, I know where he's going. Can you hear me, brother? Full time? Yeah, we can hear, we can hear yeah, you. I can hear you. All good. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't I know where I, you're going. Is it one knee? Is it one knee or both? One one knee. But I think it's I, no, I think so I don't know if it's because I've been complaining on workplace about the cold and I have to keep on wearing like you know thick clothes to try and you know keep myself, especially from my knees downwards. And also at one point I had like chill blades due to the workplace and taking me ages to warm up whilst I right. You saying workplace makes me as a doctor, makes me as a doctor start thinking work hazard. What type of work is it? Is it okay. outside building work, construction work? Work in a, work in a uh, warehouse. Where right, else? so, yeah, yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I worked in a warehouse before. I've worked in a warehouse. I've driven a lorry for many years as well. Okay. And to be honest with you, driving a lorry down my knees and I suffered with sciatica chronically, it sent me, oh. I actually was receiving, yeah, 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 yeah. I was receiving, um, um, what do you call it, um, uh, benefit for health, health benefit for some years because of um, driving a lorry, I got really chronic sciatica. And, uh, and when I went to my GP, she, she told me it was incurable. Well, I cured it. And I've cured it many times. And I've cured many other people's sides of God. So yeah. that, um, that knee stuff is part of your work that's doing it. My suggestion, one, get yourself a knee support that you don't make it any worse than it is already because you got to go to work, right? Yeah, yeah. If your knee get worse time of work they won't give you no credit they'll leave you off work and get someone from the agency and you're off i was already so up, i was already up, this i was already sorry doctor i've already took six months off for due uh, to see what I'm saying? Of order as well and i've only been back probably around see, six come, months now come on so put that put that knee support on never sleep with it Put it on when you're going out, move around. Because if you don't do that, what will happen is, you see the other knee? The other knee is on its way, not, not, not because it's got arthritis, because you're compensating by putting more pressure on the good knee. You just don't know it yet. It's just how the body works. The body's doing that for you. Yeah. It's doing a balancing trick and more pressure. And if you keep doing this, what will happen is that the other knee will start to get symptoms and before you know it, it'll be both knees. So get a knee support from the pharmacy for that knee so that it takes the strain off that knee and, and reduce the chances of you putting the pressure on the good knee and it, it becoming a problem where you have both knees suffering. So the next thing is everything I said to that sister, that, that formula, I'm, a, I'm assuring you will work within, within a week, two weeks. What time period? It will, will work. It will, here are the things again. <laughs> so ultimate bone support, ultimate bone support made by Solgar. Um, um, <clears throat> you know what I'm going to do? <clears throat> because of the time, and I can feel brother Andrew. That's my beloved brother. I can feel him. <laughs> what I'm going to do is... <laughs> yeah, 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 brother. I'm, I'm, in your, I'm in your heart. I'm in your heart. I'm in your heart. <laughs> what we're going to do Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to give up my... A number and anyone heard me say anything about any formula, whatever I've said, any questions you want to continue to ask, mm -hmm. I've got some time because I, I'm in Portugal and and you know I'm, yeah. I've, you know, I've got some more time. So I'm going to give you my number and you can text me and say what was that formula, what was that whatever, and I will give you the stuff. The number to text is zero seven nine five eight. Go on, brother. No, carry on, bro. I was going to say something. Zero seven nine five eight. Three one six seven. No, no. Zero seven. That's my PA's number. Zero seven nine zero four. Beg your pardon. Zero seven nine zero four eight nine zero seven two three. That's my personal mobile. Just like brother, brother, brother Andrew. We don't have. No we don't have nowhere to run. We don't have nowhere to run. We have we, nowhere we, to we run. Light, light 
too much. What I was going to say, Dr. Brother Mark, can you repeat that again, please? 079-04-890-723. And any listener anywhere in the world can continue to ask any question because I'm on a break at the moment, so I've had time. So just, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Walker, what, what I was going to say, brother, boss one, much love to you, King. Yeah, man, give time some prayers. Every I'm time, blessed. soldier. Real yeah, love, man. Love. Fantastic. Bless love. Bless what, what, what I was going to say, Dr. Walker, I was going to cut because, you see, th these issues are so important. So important. And they are these, we are literally dealing with life and death. So in the Q&A, um, Doctor, it, there's a Q&A box where there's quite a number of questions still in there that's not been asked, Okay. If, you, if you're okay, because I'm not going to shut the show right now. I'm going to play some music. Brothers and sisters, we've asked questions in the Q&A. Doctor, if you can, you should be able to see the Q&A. If you can just yeah, type down some answers back to them. That would be a blessing, brother. After the show's done its closure, I can work from here and say... Yes, you can work from there and answer the questions. I'll be playing some music so you can be asking the questions. Brother, Doctor, woke up once again, brother. I mean, several people said, Andrew, we need him back on again. I know that. I know that. We've gone half an hour over time. But this is the brother that I would do that with. You understand? Because me and this brother go back over 30 plus yeah. years. And understand this. Yeah. There's going to come a day, brothers and sisters. And I'm not, I, I, I don't say this lightly. There's going to come a day. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There's going to come a day where people like myself, People like Dr. Walcott, they ain't, they're going to try and silence. They are going to go and try and silence. Eat as much as you can whilst we're here. You support Dr. Walcott. You go to his, his clinics. You contact him and show him love. Because this is a brother, brother. He can say, if I was around in the days of Jesus, I would have been one of his disciples. How do we know that? Because he's standing up now. He's oh, standing wow. up now. Oh, well, Dr. Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you the last closing words, my king. What's your final marching orders for nearly 400 people that are still on the platform, king? What's your final marching orders for us tonight, king? You see this? You see this symbol here? This symbol. Yeah. This symbol is a symbol which means self-preservation. And I could tell you to love your loved ones, love your husband, love your wife, your kids, your grandchildren. But if you don't do this, you can't do none of that. You can't do anything unless you do self-preservation. So um, when you get up in the mornings, don't jump to your mobile to see who unfriend you or who texts you and da, 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 da. Um, Don't turn on your TV and start focusing on our Bakra lifestyle. Focus on self, the subject that brother Andrew started this with. I want to say focus on self. Remind yourself that beyond all the things you see out there that's dazzling us, that's, you know, that's completely betraying us, that's breaking us, that's harming us. And there's so much anxiety today that, you know, you can't sleep at night. When you do sleep and you do wake up, focus on self. Say, give thanks for life. Give thanks to the Most High. As you cleanse your mouth, as we do in, in Islam or in all the other sacred faiths, you cleanse your body, you think of the Most High, and you're cleansing your inside when you shower, you're thinking of all the things you're washing away from yourself. Do it ceremonially. <laughs> Wash away the diseases that even the knife of the surgeon can't move. You use the water as a cleanser and wash away the COVID by the wash away will wash away all the fear, wash away the, the, the what they call the, um, the, 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 the animals have it, the fright and flight. Use water and prayer and your own inner um, power to, to do that thing for you. You can do that for free, right? You can do that for free. So do that. And then after you do that, feed yourself with food that is like medicine. Take a green smoothie. Um, uh, ask me about the green smoothie and I'll send you information. You should do a green smoothie because it's mama's garden. It's, it's, it's moringa. It's, 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 um, um, uh, it's the superfood, the greatest superfood, which is chlorella and spirulina. These are the greatest superfoods. If you mix that with the cucumbers, a handful of spinach leaf, a handful of, um, of kale and some, some, some honey, if you like it sweet like me, 
add some bottled water, not tap water. I don't want to hear that any one of our people still drink tap water. If you still drink tap water, that's because you've never listened to my show and you've not heard a good doctor speak in your entire life because no doctor should have you still drinking tap water. So you put some bottled water, apple juice or some fruits, blend it and drink two glasses of that and put the rest in the fridge. That spirulina, chlorella, moringa, cucumbers, handful of spinach leaf, kale, some bottled water, apple juice, some honey or, you know, molasses, and you're good to go. Blend that and drink that. If you want to know the formula, you can't work out what I just said, follow me on the, after the show or text me on my, my mobile, my WhatsApp, and I will just send that to you for free. Have you Bro. ever, brothers and sisters, no, no, don't, don't do it for me. Have you ever heard a doctor like this in your life? Forefront, brothers and sisters, this is Dr. Walcott, the conscious doctor. Please, right now in the chat room, show this brother some love, man. Show, yeah. not not because I said it to you. If you felt this brother tonight, show the brother some love, man. Let him know we've got him because of what he's given us, man. Look at the chat room. The chat room's on fire, doctor. The chat room is on fire, doctor. Wow. Those are purple hearts. Look, purple hearts. Wow, that's it. Self-preservation. It's preservation a very powerful, brother. Very powerful symbol. When you wake up in the morning, remember it's about self-preservation. Then you can love others. Self-preservation. Do some meditation. Do some breathing exercise. Cleanse your physical body. Then go inside and do an internal talk with yourself. You know? Fantastic. Yeah, bro. Yeah. This, brother, I'm proud to you. Sister Jurita. Cousin from Jamaica has been sitting on this FaceTime right here listening and um i want to say thank you to my family members or anyone that's watching that's him i saw, I I saw quite a few walcott's i'm um, sign up tonight he this gentleman his name is fitzroy Marit. his his nickname is cutie and he's responsible for a lot of me being me like this because when i was a young child in jamaica he used to take me to the bush and show me the things, show me how to eat sugar cane, because you have to learn these things. You can't just eat sugar cane. They mash up your mouth and cut up your... They show you how to bite it, how to do the thing. So that's my cousin, my elder. He told me... Him. What's his name? What's his name? His nickname is well been known in... in, in, in um uh, in, His name is Cutie to the ladies. Big ladies up Cutie. Know Cutie. So Cutie... He won't come off. He's sitting there watching me. Yes, go on, cutie. Go on, cutie. Lick shot. Yeah. And he's from Found Jamaica. You, like town, and he beat cancer. He also had it and he beat it. And I gave him some Fantastic. support. He knows, he knows about the green smoothie. He's been drinking that for time. He's recovered. He's nice. He's in the UK now. So All he's right. Good. Yeah, he's in the UK. That's cutie. Yeah. He, he was there as my elder when I was growing as a young boy and teach me how to eat and things and take me to cave and bush and climb tree, how to climb trees. And that was my elder right there. That's my elder. So thank you. All the family members that's watching anywhere. Um, um, my mother, if she's um, watching, uh, cutie, Aunt Sarah, Ver, Marvlet, Priest, Bob, whole family, wherever you are in the world, the Walker family, the Wallace family, and of course, Deborah who may be watching, my sweetheart here with me, her mom, Deborah, may be watching. So Deborah, thank you for watching. If you are watching, all the friends, family, all the Conscious Health is Your Wealth crew, the Rose Apple crew, yeah! And all <laughs> my followers on Friday, oh, yeah. 11 o'clock till 4 o'clock, Conscious Health is Your Wealth show Conscious every Friday. FM, yeah. Five hours of health talk, five hours. We got over 70,000 listeners, sometimes 80,000, quite easily. That's the truth. Join me and Brother Andrew on Friday. I'm on from 11 a.m. to 4, marathon, every Friday. Even when I'm in the UK, I do that. I may have to change when I go back, but there you go. Um, catch me on the Friday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Brother Andrew will join me. But you join me whenever you can within that framework, and it'll be a wonderful experience to have you. Purple Hearts, love. Purple Hearts. Come on, brothers and sisters. Dr. Walcott, the conscious doctor, every time. Sister Jurita, yeah. we thank you, sister, for being online, taking all the questions. Obviously, there's a tons of questions in there. Um, right. It's just crazy. So Lady Dr. Adele. Walcott's going to be staying with us. Oh, Lady Adele. Lady Adele is And Lady Adele. Adele. Oh, my. You've been, you've been quoting Lady Adele all night, man. 
Fantastic. If she can come on my show and talk We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen, brother. Ridiculous. Oh, brother. She needs her own school. (laughs) Yes. But she does. Yes. If she had her own school, she would be able to create the antidote in our younger, next generation. They need the antidote app to deal with what we have to come. And she has... She has the science to make that app to antidote the future. Absolutely. Brothers and sisters, as Dr. Walker has stated, you can catch the brother again for five hours on a Friday with the investigator. It's his show. I'm his guest. 